we're not equipping physicians for modern care. I'm a clinician, an informatician as well, started in internal medicine, and it was my job to deal with all of these different tasks, COVID-19 triaging, understanding lab values, preoperative risk management. And the problem is that the tools that we're giving physicians, the tools that I had, are these 100-page PDFs from societies. And for me, it really didn't work. You know, what I used to do is I would take these PDF documents and put it in an index card so that I would have the algorithms in front of me. And then I would make little notations because it's different for every hospital system that you work in. And of course, you can't stay up to date in that way. And luckily, I met my co-founder, PJ, who was a technical co-founder. And he said, hey, what if there's a way of taking that clinical knowledge and instead of putting it on an index card, we could turn it into an app at the point of care. I'm Yair Saperstein. I'm the CEO of AvoMD and the co-founder. AvoMD is the no-code platform for clinical decision support. We've already launched our live in over 20 notable health systems, 10 societies, more than four life sciences, um, and continuing to grow. So the problem starts in the physician's office. You know, uh, patients come to physicians often knowing more up-to-date info than the docs actually do, or docs are always rushed. And the reason is because we're not equipping physicians for modern care. I'm a clinician, an informatician as well, started in internal medicine, and it was my job to deal with all of these different tasks, COVID-19 triaging, understanding lab values, preoperative risk management. And the problem is that the tools that we're giving physicians, the tools that I had, are these 100-page PDFs from societies, sometimes amalgamated into long articles and up-to-date and other uh, sources that join them together, or these disparate apps, whether it's EHR alerts that constantly come in through the electronic health record causing alert fatigue or things like Lupus Advisor. And for me, it really didn't work. You know, what I used to do is I would take these PDF documents and put it in an index card so that I would have the algorithms in front of me and then I would make little notations because it's different for every hospital system that you work Work in. And of course, you can't stay up to date in that way. And luckily, I met my co-founder, PJ, who was a technical co-founder, and he said, hey, what if there's a way of taking that clinical knowledge and instead of putting it on an index card, we could turn it into an app at the point of care, started as a mobile tool, then a desktop tool, then integrated with Epic and other electronic health records so that it can actually work within health systems. And so we started working on that so that we can actually put that in front of clinicians to keep them up to date. It quickly became unscalable because how could we create everything? And that's where the no code part came in. We created a no code builder, which allows for the transformation of this clinical knowledge by anyone via drag and drop. Now, of course, you don't want every clinician to actually edit it. So we set up a system of governance to allow for the hospital and safety officers and those others who should control the guidelines within health systems be able to create the point of care app. Now, to show you the difference of what the point of care app actually is for a physician, I'm going to take you through an example. You're looking at the live AVOA site. And let's say I have a patient with high blood pressure who is a complicated patient, also with chronic kidney disease. So I'm gonna go through the inputs for me as a primary care provider treating this patient who's a complex patient and I get my blood pressure goal for diabetes with the studies linked, lifestyle interventions, including pictures that I can give to my patients like how to cut out salt. Even I can click on the journal articles to see more details. So I have everything that I need at the point of care. Within Epic, it can also read from the patient context and no labs. We're also able to do auto note generation and deeper EHR integration is like the ability to create orders and order sets. And because of this, we're able to make doctors more accurate and efficient. We improve patient outcomes by 36%, cost savings therefore of 700K per institution for savings of one pathway and save clinicians up to 55% of their time at the point of care. We do all of this while not skimping on the clinical accuracy. We actually improve clinical accuracy by 20%. And my favorite is that providers love us. 93 to 100% want expanded usage of AVOMD. We engage multiple stakeholders to accomplish the same aim of giving patients better care by enabling docs to do so. We work with societies as our content providers to take their 100-page PDF guidelines work through our no-code builder and create the decision support apps. 
the provider organizations are able to customize it through our no-code builder. And no-code means you don't need to know coding knowledge. And so they're able to customize it to their own workflow because care is local. And finally, we're supported by life sciences because their products are inherent in the guidelines and therefore they have the same aim of getting it out now in a way that's compliant and ethical. Because of this, we've seen explosive growth in our monthly active users, 45% month over month, ARR growth of 30% month over month, approaching 600K by the end of this year and 2 million by the end of next year. Our market size, 10 billion in the US, 49 billion worldwide, both growing because of increasing regulations to actually have clinical decision support, which in turn is because of the need for more of this decision support at the point of care for docs. We have a team that really understands it. Both Junghum and I are physicians and informaticians. Junghum is a software developer as well. And I led two nonprofits to become international organizations with extensive management experience. Lawrence has done private equity investing in the health tech field uh, for five years before coming to us to help us with injecting some business aspect into our founding team. We also have key advisors, and I'd like to call out one in particular, Mark Clermont, who's the CEO of Cecilia Health, another startup health company, and the former CFO of the founding one of UpToDate, one of our direct competitors who's lending insights into this world and how to scale up quickly. And finally, our fundraise, we raised 3 million in our pre-seed cap table includes Columbia Mount Sinai. We're now raising 4 million for our seed, expanding our sales and product team, specifically a customer success manager and deeper EHR integration. Thank you, or AvoMD, the no-code platform for clinical decision support. Question for you, what do you say to people who say to you, doesn't this already exist? We always hear about, you know, there's just so many apps out there. Epic has their own alerts. Um, all these societies have their own apps. Uh, what's your response to that? It's, uh, it's inherent in the question. There are all these disparate sources for information, up to date, the different apps, even the guidelines that the hospitals are sending out to their clinicians. Clinicians don't know where to look in the time that's appropriate, and that's why they're always rushed. There's a way of really getting it all into one place that fits within the workflow when the clinicians need it, for the right patient in the right time in the right way, then you've solved the issue that all of these disparate apps are trying to solve. So yes, there are different solutions that exist for parts of these, but there's none that puts it together in the way that has worked for clinicians. That's why there's still more trying to come out. It is the holy grail that you're after. I love it. Um, question from an attendee. What are you basing cost savings, time savings, outcome, et cetera, data on? Yeah, so there's been some uh, randomized control trials conducted independently, implementations that different hospitals uh, have done. So uh, one example, time-saving, Dell Medical created a COVID pathway. Um, they did a survey based for their uh, clinicians before actually implementing the pathway on AVOMD and the way that they currently did it, and then a survey afterwards. Uh, more clinicians answered the survey afterwards, which is already one indication, but it was statistically significant to show that the provider saved, I think that one was 54% of their time in actually dealing with these COVID patients. Um, some of the cost analysis, one was done in Albany VA, uh, where they implemented a chest pain pathway, and they found that it was able to actually reduce the time needed for uh, ED flow and get them to the right place, whether it's ICU or the floors, and then they did their own cost analysis, and we're using that data. And can you talk to us a little bit more about, you know, the integration and if you're a health system and you're interested, but feeling like they don't have manpower, um, you know, to, to implement your solution, what do you say to them? So integration, we're part of the Epic app marketplace. So you can just download the app uh, with one click through the health system. Um, for those that feel like they don't have enough resources within the health systems, they can reach out to us. We do have a services and content team that can help uh, health systems scale up quickly. And that's how we've been able to spread so quickly uh, over the past couple of years. And so for clinicians who are on this, on this call, how exactly do they access your platform? So for individual clinicians that are part of a health system that has it, uh, you can get it through Epic or through your health system with single sign-on. If your health system doesn't have it, tell them that they should get it. Um, for those that want to access it independent of a health system, uh, you can use the mobile app. Just type in AVOMD. You can use the live app, so live.avomd.io to search, search AVOMD on Google, and you'll be able to access it. 
Um, and last question, how do you work with pharma companies? Pharma companies. So yeah, the big question for pharma companies from their perspective is, well, how do we influence the workflow in a way that can get uh, clinicians to actually respond and do behavior change? And the problem with that is that that's a whole ethical issue if you're actually having the pharma companies change workflow. And so the way that we work is we establish guidelines together with the medical societies and then complete it. And then we work with the pharma companies to allow for them to help on distribution. So they're not accessing what goes into it or reviewing it, they're choosing if it suits their own needs and make it publicly available. So rather than charging health system for these guidelines now that exist within AVOMD, they're basically lowering the paywall. Awesome.